Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to All Beer Inside. Today we are back at the festival. We are in Orleans, Ontario at the Orleans Craft Beer Fest. As you can hear, the band's warming up behind me. We're here to do a wonderful day, speak to a lot of exhibitors here, and uh, we get everybody's little story. Enjoy the show. All right, we got here Buck Bruski, also Chris, uh, from episode 116 of the podcast, also Broadhead's Eastern uh, sales rep. That's correct. See, yeah, I knew it was close. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, for those who don't know about the brewery but know about your podcast, tell people about Broadhead. Yeah, so Broadhead, we, uh, we're a local brewery, been brewing in Ottawa for almost 11 years now. It's, you know, it's a, it's a real underdog story. The original owners and founders started the brewery in a laundry room basement, moved to a commercial place from there, and now we're in a brand new state-of-the-art brewery here in Orleans. And uh, things are going really well. We're busy, 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 busy. I uh, do like the new location versus the old one because the old one I felt like I was probably going to get murdered at some point. Only if you said something mean about the beer. Uh, okay. Which well, we so. still will do. <laughs> uh, awesome. So uh, I'm assuming this isn't Broadhead's first Orleans Craft Beer Fest? No, I think we've been here every year since it started. Obviously not for the last couple of years because something came up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, it's, we love it. It's, one of our, it's probably our favorite festival. I personally think it's the best craft beer festival in the city. Uh, it's well run, lots of people, but it still feels kind of intimate. Great beer selections, great food, great music. You know, we always have a really good time, so I'm really happy to be back. Amazing. Now, you brought me out a tasty beverage here to try. What am I drinking? Yeah, so this is our brand new summer seasonal. It's our peach mango Kolsch. Uh, so it's a Kolsch. You know, you got your lagered ale with a hint of peach and mango. It's not super sweet, but the fruit flavor is a little bit there on the back end to kind of liven up the you know regular Kolsch profile to it. I like it a lot and it's uh, it's selling pretty well right now I think. Awesome as we do well we had to do virtually but we got to do in person now. A toss! Cheers bud. <laughs> oh it smells beautiful. Yeah it's well balanced. That is a summer beer. Yeah it's nicely balanced like we don't with all our fruit beers whether it's the blueberry the peach mango or you know whatever we want it to be balanced we don't want it to be too too sweet to turn off regular beer drinkers but we also want it to be a draw in people who want the fruity, you know, cr crazy beers. So it, it's, a, it's all about balance. And I think we do that pretty well. Well, I mean, you guys are regularly just watching your Instagram, pulling out beer after beer after beer. So clearly, I believe it's Matt. He's a very, very busy guy. Mark, actually. Mark, Mark. Yeah, it's all good. It's all good. There is a Matt. Actually, Matt is the assistant brewer. Okay, so, so, so yeah, it was close. He's a busy guy, too. Um, but yeah, no, we, I mean, we do small batch releases every two weeks as well. Uh, we're doing seasonals every three months. Plus our main core brands, of which we have seven year-round, seven or eight. So at the brewery tap room, we always have like 12 beers on tap. So you're never going to come in and drink the same thing twice, unless you want to. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, so somebody comes here, tries a few of your beers. Uh, any kind of guys around that you're highly suggesting today? Well, you know, we got Spark Brewing just nearby. They're great. Vimy just nearby if you like your, you know, more classic beer styles. Uh, Flora Hall, another one of the best in the city. They do some awesome stuff. I mean, everybody here is great, you know. You, you really can't go wrong. Small Pony, great to see them out. But, uh, yeah, you, you can't go wrong with any of these guys. Especially after the storm a couple of weeks ago. Seriously, yeah. <laughs> Everyone needs some sunshine and some cold beers. No, that's fantastic. So uh, it's been a great talk. Hopefully we could do a full interview at Broadhead one day Absolutely. and get to know the brewery. Uh, but for those who aren't in the know, let them know where they can find Broadhead. Yeah, so Broadhead, we're LCBO Beer Store grocery stores, a lot of your favorite local bars, pubs, restaurants. And if we're not there, ask for it. Tell them to bring it in. Uh, myself and my colleague Jeff, who's just out of frame, uh, we're the sales reps for Ottawa, and we do our best to make sure that no matter what part of eastern Ontario you are in, we, you can get a cold pint of Broadhead. And then if those who want to physically visit the brewery, where is that located? Yeah, so it is off uh, Vimont Crescent here in Orleans, and I think the address is 1630 by Mont Crescent, and you can, yeah, it's not even on my card. It's not, it's, not it's not even on our business cards. You can you can double check online, but we're just yeah, off uh, St. Joseph Boulevard and, and 10th Line, basically around there. So east end of Ottawa. And social media. Social media, we're at Broadhead Beer. Perfect. Thank you very much. Awesome. Have a great Thanks. festival. Good to see you, buddy. All right, joining me now is John from Spark Brewing. You might remember, remember him from episode 44 of our show. It's been a while. It has been a while, John. I hope things are going well at Spark. We saw some unfortunate incident on your Instagram, but uh, besides that, things are going well. Everything is fine. We're still uh, still brewing beer, still uh, have the tap room, and we have our patio open in the back, so uh, this summer's been great. And we're 
like so happy to be here at the Orleans Beer Festival. It's been fantastic. Is this your first Orleans Beer Festival? This is our first festival period. Like we opened right at the start of the pandemic and this is the first, uh, this is basically the first festival that we've been uh, able to do. So very happy about that. I mean, you guys opened during the pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> you were one of our early pandemic interviews on top of that. So it's pretty wild where the last 27 months where things have gone. It has been a tough slog. So to be able to come out here, like see people, talk to them face to face, it's freaking fantastic. Yeah, uh, you're uh, our first festival uh, that we've done the interview at since things have reopened. But in Montreal, we had our Mondial a few weeks ago, and that was it's so nice just to pay people come out and enjoy happiness again and enjoy some beers. So it's really strange, you know, to talk to people, but uh, everyone's in really good spirits. Uh, being able to try all the breweries that I haven't been able to try really because we haven't gone out anywhere, it's like uh, it's awesome. See some old friends, uh, it's been fantastic. And uh, you brought me some uh, beverage here to try. What am I uh, drinking here? So this is our latest variation of our uh, Voices Carry Fruited Sour. Uh, this iteration is uh, blackberry, blackcurrant, Concord grape, and then we put a little bit of lactose in this. Um, and it's basically fresh as of this festival. Um, we'll have it available uh, in the tap room and in bottles, hopefully early next week. Love it. Uh, as we do, toast. Cheers. Oh, so well balanced. Like the incredible beer, so well balanced. See, this is fun. We get to share. Yeah, yeah. And what made you guys have a VIP lounge versus everybody else here? Well, we actually were one of the last breweries to sign up for this festival, so they put us kind of in the corner. But as luck would have it, the space was vacant, so we kind of just took it over. And this is our little VIP lounge. And uh, this is probably not going out live, but uh, <laughs> if anybody hears this, come by, sit down. It's fun. <laughs> Well, I mean, speaking of that, uh, where uh, for those who haven't seen the original episode 44 with you, uh, if people are looking for you in the Chinatown of Ottawa, uh, where can people physically find you? So we are at 702 Somerset Street West uh, in Chinatown, as you said. Uh, basically, Bronson and Somerset, right next to the Yangtze restaurant. Uh, we have a brand new sign, so we're, it's much easier to find. Uh, and we're open uh, to Wednesday through Sunday. And uh, we do have a back patio. Um, we're trying to increase our food. Uh, production now so we might have some more bites this summer and uh, yeah come see us and uh, you mentioned you've been able to try some other fantastic beers uh, anybody uh, that you suggest that pe obviously people come here try your beers or at your location uh, where uh, what are people that you've enjoyed at the festival today that you or yesterday uh, that you suggest they try to find an LCBO or their own uh, personal breweries well my good friend Sean at uh, Small Pony Barrel Works uh, basically everything they make is fantastic uh, my friend Chris and Adam, they work there as well, so they've, they've been putting out great beers for the last four or five years now. Uh, and uh, we went saw the Dominion folks who we haven't seen in a while. Uh, they're always great. I mean, I don't know anybody, really. Uh, I'm, I'm just looking around. Hoffman Browworks, who are just here, who I've never tried before, they're fantastic too. So, yeah. Any brewery in Ottawa, basically. Everybody's doing some really, really kick-ass stuff. Just share the love. That's the most important part. That's okay. Exactly and uh, for those who are looking for where they can find, where can they find you on social media? Uh, at spark.beer on Instagram is kind of our number one thing. We're on uh, at sparkbeer on Facebook and Twitter. And uh, I think that's it. We're on TikTok, but I don't know what that is. So, you know, I think you can check it out. <laughs> As somebody else who's also in their 40s, yeah, I don't get TikTok. So. <laughs> awesome. Thanks a lot, John. Thanks a lot. Good to see you. All right, and joining me now is Misha, the territory rep from Cameron's Brewing out of Oakville, Ontario. Mr. Carp, pleasure to meet you. Thank you very much for uh, talking to us about your uh, your beers, the festival, and what brought you here today. Uh, so uh, tell us what Cameron's is all about. Cameron's, if I could put it in a very simple word, is classics moving into the new century. Uh, we're experts in brewing quality in our personal opinion and as far as the taste you'll figure it out from yourself when you try it the biggest thing with Cameron's is that we're focused on quality and craftsmanship which is what craft brewing is all about awesome so uh, what am I consuming you are consuming our newest addition to uh, the lineup which is just released perfectly in time for the Canadian festivities. Uh, it is called the Coast to Coast Dry Hopped Lager. Um, it is 5.2% ABV. Uh, IBU is around 40. 
and it drinks like a lager but behaves like an IPA. Love it. Uh, as we do on the show, it's a uh, toast. Skol or Jiveli? We say in my country, Jiveli. Ooh. Okay, that is deceptive. I would see it's a little bit more than what you would expect out of a lager. It got a nice pithy bite to it, but not overwhelming. Very clean, subtle, short finish, which makes you want to drink more. Uh, is this uh, Cameron's first appearance at the Orleans Craft Beer Fest? Actually, it is indeed. So this is us breaking ice for Cameron's Brewing Company. Um, I've tried to line us up, but obviously the world stopped. And uh, this was our chance. And uh, honestly, I couldn't be more honored and pleased to be an out-of-towner in a very local uh, festival. But me being local is how we make the connection to the grounds. And honestly, it's... What they have here is something very special, and I look forward to growing with it if they invite me back next year. No, that's fantastic. And, uh, I mean, the show, we're all about supporting local. Clearly Cameron's Oakville, Ontario. That's pretty local to central Ontario. So, Well, central Ontario, but don't forget, I'm the local kid. Our sales team here are all locals. Uh, we have our retail expert actually slinging beers right now behind us. And to myself, uh, which lives in... Eastern of Eastern Ontario and French Canada, uh, up in Hammond, uh, which is literally a 20 minute drive down the street. So, last touch for the coast to coast dry hop lager. If you really want to feel Canada at its best, how I like to say, so Canadiana, um, just a can design. Jordan, you want to pass me a can of uh, coast to coast real quick? So, we can see here, you got a little bit of everything. Horseshoes, fishing, lobsters, the Winnebago, the highway in the back. I think, I think in a can and on the can, the fleur de lis, everything. You're pretty much set up for an ultimate crusher, especially for Canada, if you ask my opinion. Speaking of which, today of this episode is Canada Day. So for those who are watching, happy Canada Day. Uh, so for those who uh, want to visit the brewery and check you guys out online, where can they find all that stuff? Uh, you go to www.cameronsbrewing.com. Obviously, we have our Instagram, which is Cameron's Brewing. Um, I'm the Mish Maestro on Instagram. I always have a lot of local attention that I post about all our clients and accounts and accounts to be. Uh, a lot of competitive interest as well, as we know we're sharing space with our next door neighbors from Nickelbrook, literally down the road on the f Queensway. Hashtag 403. Um, yeah, so if, if you wanted to get in touch, you can call the brewery. They'll direct you. Our website's really comprehensive. We have a really good home delivery program, which you'll get this wonderful guy delivering straight to your doorstep should you order. Uh, but all the information's on the website, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. We, it's literally brewery to your doorstep concept, and it's been really good for us over the last two years, and even more no, so now. So. Amazing. Thank you very much. Have a great day. And a great festival. Thanks. Thank you for your time. All right, joining me now is Kyle from Covered Bridge Brewing. How are you? Good, yourself? Good. good. Uh, so uh, tell us why Covered Bridge is joining uh, the Orleans Craft Beer Festival this year. Well, we already deliver out here, so we thought we'd bring more of our beers out and maybe get some people out to uh, our Stitchville Brewery on Ivor Road and, and try out a couple more things. Fantastic. Love to hear it. Is this uh, Covered Bridge's first Orleans Craft Beer Fest? I believe it is, yes. Cool. Awesome. Uh, and what made you decide after years, unfortunately, the last 27 months of not being able to have fun, what brought you guys back? Well, again, we're, we're delivering out here, so uh, Orleans is a great community. I live out here as well, so we thought we'd bring out our beers and, uh, and, and try some new things, especially our eight beer here, and uh, Orange Blonde is another popular one today. You brought me out a beer here to try. What am I trying here? This is the eight. It's commemorating eight years in business. We're almost up to nine now, which is great. Our Imperial Stout, and it's aged in uh, whiskey casks, so some really, really good notes. A, a, a lovely 10% as well. The nose is, is completely on what, what I love. So. Yeah, that is great. Awesome. All right, uh, toast. Enjoy. Oh, so good. <laughs> this reminds me of kind of like uh, almost the Bastard series that Nickelbrook does every year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really, really great. And, uh, you know, we only have it for maybe a year and a half after brewing. So got to come by the uh, brewery in Stittsville to come get some. Yeah, I, I can't wait to possibly get one of these. Uh, 
I know with everything that changed, were you guys able to deliver during the pandemic? Yeah, we started that up right away and our deliveries skyrocketed immediately. They've toned down a little bit since, so we got kind of one day out in Orleans and then two days out in the West, so we're still going strong. Yeah, it's fantastic year and you guys surviving the pandemic is huge. Like a lot of you guys did. I'm very surprised uh, there was as few failures as there actually was uh, due to the pandemic. So it's it's great. Uh, so somebody's at the festival or, or visiting your brewery. Uh, any friends at today's festival that you suggest uh, people try after trying your beers? Uh, we really like Overflow beside us here and the uh, Skeleton Park Brewery from Kingston. They've been uh, great to us. Uh, awesome. Fantastic. Amazing beer. I look forward to uh, speaking with the brewers and the owners when we actually make it to your brewery sometime in the future. Uh, let people who are viewing where they can find you physically and on social media. Uh, so we're at uh, 119 Iber Road in uh, Stittsville. And then we've got our website, www.coverbridgebrewery.com. Social media? Uh, Instagram, Facebook, uh, I think Twitter as well. So yeah, we're good. Cool. So we're going to add all that in the show notes. Check these guys out. And when you're in uh, Stittsville, definitely grab a beer with them and Brew Revolution when you're in Stittsville. Okay, here we are with Sam from Big Rig Brewery. Hi. Hi, thanks for letting us speak with you about the brewery and why you're here at the festival today. So give us a little bit of information about Big Rig Brewery. So Big Rig Brewery is located in Canada. We have a tap room out there. We have some nice food, we have some drinks, and uh, we do tap room tours as well. So if you go through Brew Donkey, and we're just starting to do our own tours as well. So uh, yeah, that's where we're located. Um, we have um, some Hazy IPA, some Cerveza today, and a couple Rattlers. So this is our brand new beer. It's a Cerveza. It's made with predominantly corn-based uh, malt, um, and malt as well as corn. Awesome, uh, let's give uh, the Cerveza a try. Toast! Ooh, nice, crisp, clean, a little bit of corn back, back build. It's uh, very tasty. Uh, so is this, uh, as we mentioned pre-show, uh, Big Rig's been here every year? Yeah, so Big Rig's been at the Orleans Beer Fest every single year that's been happening. It's one of the biggest festivals in Ottawa for the summer, so it's one that we always want to get to. We love, and it's been a long two years, okay? So <laughs> we love to be out and just be connecting with all the new breweries, all the breweries from the past. It's just nice to be out and connecting with people again, for sure. Clearly, you have the brewery. What's uh, one of your favorite beers out of uh, Big Rig? Your person. Personally, it's this new one here. It's, I always go for it after work when I'm doing a cash up. I just pour myself half a pint of that one there. That uh, sounds terrible for a life. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. So uh, somebody comes here, tries your beers, or even goes to the Nakata, Kanata location. Any uh, friends of the festival you suggest people trying out? Yes, absolutely. So uh, next door to us is Small Pony Barrel, Barrel Works. They do uh, batch beers, sour beers, and they uh, age their beers as well. So they're fantastic. As well as Calabogi Brewing Company, they're right across the road from us as well. And uh, this new one right beside us, it's right from Rockland. They're fantastic as well. Their brand's making new. Yeah, uh, that little area, Kanata, where you guys are, is awesome. It's so convenient to just walk to three different breweries. So, and I'm assuming you had the Brew Donkey tours as well come through? Yes, always. Brew Donkeys are on Saturdays, but as the summer goes on and more people know about the Brew Donkey tours, it'll probably be Thursday, Friday, Saturdays. But it's all up in the air right now, but definitely have some people over for some tours for sure. Yeah, it's amazing. Hopefully this is, we're back, we're back to normal. Yeah. Not, knock on wood. So, uh, Okay, so for those who are looking for you uh, physically at your location, where can people physically find the Kanata Brewery. Yeah, so we're located at 103 Schneider Road in Kanata. It's right off of Carling and March Road in the Tech Park there. And social media? Social media at Big Rig Brewery on Instagram and Facebook. Amazing. Thank you very much for today. Have a great festival. Thank you. Thank you. All right, joining me now is Leighton from Bicycle Craft Brewery. Uh, hey, Carp. How's it uh, going? Good. Uh, finally, uh, nice to speak with you guys uh, about Bicycle Craft, and hopefully in the future we get a full-on interview at the brewery in uh, downtown downtownish Ottawa? Uh, actually, closer to train yards. Um, we're at 850 Industrial Ave, Unit 12. Um, you can always find like the brand new Diamond Storage that's like, right across the street from us. Big, easy landmarks. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. Looking forward to it. Uh, so, uh, is this Bicycle Craft's first Orleans Craft Brewfest? No, I believe this is our third that we've been at. Uh, I know I personally was at one of the uh, previous two that we were at. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's great to be back to this event and, you know, seeing all the people out. Uh, it's, it's, it's been a blast so far. First two days have been pretty busy. It's been great. How does it feel to be back after two years of 
all the stuff that's gone on in Canada? Uh, great. <laughs> like, honestly, being able to see everybody um, serving beer up to everybody, uh, getting them exposure to our brand, and uh, just craft beer in general. It's It's been great. You brought me a great looking beverage here to try. What am I going to be drinking? So this is our newest release that we've got at the brewery. It's called uh, Flying Start IPA. So it is a New England style IPA. Uh, I believe it's 6, 6 or 6.7% ABV. Uh, we've got a lot of Mosaic and Nelson Savan for the hops. So you get that really nice uh, tropical citrus, Atalfa mango, and uh, with the Nelson Savan, that really nice white wine grapey almost a gooseberry uh, flavor and it winds up more in the finish and you'll get like a nice big punch of that but yeah i could just smell the juiciness so it's i'm looking forward to this yeah with, uh, with that double dry hop in in the aroma booster there it's just killer it's it's really quite nice unfortunately you don't have a beer so just toast, yeah, toast yeah, it's okay exactly. you're you're busy so. yeah uh, what serving so oh yeah. oh yeah oh yeah. So it's not like crazy juicy, uh, no like kind of crazy hot punch of the face, like super incredibly balanced, beautiful beer. Yeah. Uh, I can see my Joe drinking in one or two of these because if I drink three or four, I might be in problems. So. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, especially like I say, that 6.7%, 6 I get, can, it can definitely catch up to you later for sure. Um, but no, like you say, it's just that that nice, um, just flying start. It is a flying start. You're, you're already up there and, and just riding out that tropical flavor vibe. It's the haze on it is great. Um, I, uh, when we were canning it up, I just couldn't get enough of running back and grabbing a little five ounce. And yeah, yeah, yeah it, was, it was awesome. Fantastic. Uh, so obviously, I always suggest now you guys are at the beginning of the festival, which is great. Uh, somebody comes around, has a couple of your beers, any friends of the festival to try? Uh, yeah, actually, and even right close to us, um, Vimy Brewing. Um, they do a bunch of amazing, more classic styles, um, and they're, they're just killing it. Um, uh, also, Stray Dog Brewing, their, um, their New England um, uh, Shaggin Wagon. Uh, it, it's right up there with like some of my favorite Nipas uh, in the Ottawa area, absolutely. Um, Spark, their sour game is phenomenal. It's so good, absolutely amazing. Uh, and they're more like um, uh, Chinatown area in the city, yeah, super good. Super, super good. I'm assuming bicycle still kicking butt as well. Yeah, we're uh, we're releasing pretty much one or two new uh, beers a week, uh, and in addition to keeping our Velocipede, which is our West Coast uh, flagship, just pumping out the doors. It's crazy. Like we we can't keep up with the demand for Velocipede. Uh, frequencies up there as well. Our our mainstay APA, just the uh, refreshing uh, body and, and and the aroma and everything on there. This nice sort of like pineapple uh, flavor you get out of it, and the um, sort of like lychee as well. It's just, it's a crazy, crazy crushable like summer beer. It's, it's so good. What we love is we're all about supporting Canadian companies and, and, and Amer local American companies near us like Vermont and, and upstate New York and stuff like that. It's just, we got to keep each other going, especially in uh, supporting a, a local business is the most important part. Oh, absolutely. I, you know, like, um, and that was one of the things with uh, our backyard pale ale that we uh, recently did and sold out of so quick. It was an all Ontario ingredients based pale ale with uh, local Ontario um, uh, Cascade hops as well. It was just, it was so good. Like I, being able to support, um, uh, again, like our local malters too, like in the region. It, it was just absolutely amazing using their product in our beers. We, we cannot get enough of their stuff as well. Love it. Very happy. Like I said, I look forward to the future full interview at your brewery with your owners and your brewers, or if that's a combination, because sometimes it's both. Uh, but let people know they can find you online, website, and social media. Yeah, so um, just look for bicyclecraftbrewery.ca. Uh, and from there, you can also get to our uh, Instagram and Twitter. Instagram uh, is probably the best place to find all of our newest releases. Uh, we get on that as soon as we can and just... Um, uh, yeah, the, the response from there has been absolutely amazing as well. As soon as we post stuff up, people are just hitting that love, and it's, it's, it's been super great. Yeah. And I look forward to getting time to get back to the tap room when we're not super busy with the show. So, oh, yeah. uh, Leighton, thank you very much for talking with us today, and I look yeah. forward to returning to Bicycle Craft in the future. Yeah, sounds great. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, and here we are with Jamie from Ridge Rock. Hey, guys. Uh, so thanks for uh, bringing us some beers today. Uh, let's talk about the beer we're about to have. Uh, this is our Little Tiles. It's a double dry hopped mosaic single hop IPA. Comes in about 6.8%. 
if we nail it. If not, it's 6.7, 6.9, you know, whatever. Can't be perfect. But uh, yeah, this is just one of the beers that we have in our uh, ever-changing, revolving uh, IPA line. We, we try to keep something for the people somewhere between like 6 and 7.5% seven and kind of all the time. All right, as we do. Cheers. A toast! Oh, so juicy, so clean. You said 6.7? Uh, yeah, this one's 6.7 or 6.8. That's a dangerous 6.7. Thank you very that much. something that is, you're like, I've had a few too many of these. Uh-oh. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Having been in the in the uh, brewery in Carp, uh, you guys opened during the pandemic, right? No, we opened uh, in 2018. Oh, okay. Yeah, we opened, actually, our first day open was the day that the tornado struck uh, Dunrobin in Constance Bay out that way. So uh, we were lucky. We got to bring a whole bunch of people in, uh, take care of them, buy some hot meals for people, and uh, provide a little shelter for the for the next couple of weeks. Odd, because I've only like recently heard about Ridge Rock since like the 2020s. So uh, maybe you're a social media person. So. Uh, possibly. I think what really got us out there was we were doing a lot of home delivery during the pandemic, and we were pushing that hard. We were dropping signs around the city and uh, all that stuff, just trying to get like a, whatever business we could. Um, and the goal at first was just to empty the tanks and see what was going to happen, but the demand was so high that we just kept brewing and brewing and made a ton of cans, and uh, yeah, now we're back uh, full throttle. Is this uh, Ridge Rocks' first Orleans Craft Beer Fest? Uh, no, we did uh, we did one prior to the pandemic, and I mean, this is the best festival there is. Um, it's well managed, it's well run, lots of respect. Everyone that shows up at this thing is friendly. So uh, yeah, by far this is the best festival around. Speaking of friendly, so somebody here comes here, tries a couple of your beers. Any like friends of the festival to try out? Uh, right now, we're uh, we're drinking beer from Cameron's, uh, Flora Hall. Uh, obviously, our good friend Sean McVeigh over at Small Pony, and of course, our good hosts uh, from Orleans here, uh, Orleans Brewing and Stray Dog. People who are in from, let's say, Canada or Stittsville, like, how do you convince people to come to Carp and check you guys out? Uh, well, we, we hope that the beer speaks for itself and that the word of mouth gets out there. But uh, at the end of the day, we're a brew pub. Uh, I've got a full kitchen, full menu, uh, lots of space. And uh, yeah, it's kind of a friendly place to hang out. Lots of space is an understatement. I know one of your social media persons is like, yo, come and have a meeting in our giant old safe. So yeah. that's that's a big thing. Cool. Uh, awesome. I look forward to speaking to you guys in the future. Yeah, me too. Uh, to super fantastic beer. Everything I've grabbed the last time I was at your location in Carp, Ontario, before Quebec shut down again, uh, I had a great time there, and uh, I can't wait to talk again. Awesome. So, uh, for those who are looking for where you guys are at, located physically and online, how can people find you? Uh, we're at 421 Donald B. Monroe uh, in Carp. That's literally what we would call downtown Carp. You can't miss it. And uh, we're RidgeRockBruco.ca, basically the same tag for Instagram. Cool. And uh, so for those who are looking, you just park at the train station right across the street from what I remember. Yeah, our parking our parking's right across the street. Small little dirt lot. And then uh, most of the street parking in Carp is free and uh, you're good to go. So these are definitely a place to check out when you're in kind of eastern Ontario. Check out Ridge Rock. Fantastic place. Have a good one. All right. Here I am now with Grant from Nickelbrook Brewing. Hey, Carp. How's it going, man? I'm good. Yourself. Uh, so what brought Nickelbrook out to Orleans Craft Beer Fest today? We have been unable to sample beer to the uh, general masses for three years now, so uh, it was just a great opportunity to uh, get back out and uh, get the liquid on lips with uh, with all the good people of Orleans. Fantastic! You brought me out a tasty looking beer here to try. What am I drinking? Yeah, so this is uh, this is our jam stand. So this is vanilla hibiscus raspberry Berliner Weiss. So uh, we stepped it up uh, maybe about three weeks ago. Uh, we launched this. So. Uh, we had a little more conservative can in the beginning, uh, and it was just the raspberry. So uh, we've stepped it up with the vanilla, the hibiscus, and it uh, smells fantastic, eh? Yeah, the nose, I, like, my, old, my eyes were rolling back there. It's, <laughs> it's uh, I don't know if there's anything in there, but as we do, uh, oh. toast. Cheers. Yeah. So 4%, those vanilla tones uh, really come uh, show through, so fantastic. This is a big hit at this, uh, at this festival for, uh, for us. So. We brought the Pink Lemonade Sour, uh, our Zap. Uh, we brought this, we brought the Wicked Awesome, our uh, No Bad Days, our Easy Going Lager, and uh, our uh, Tongue Tied Double Dry Hopped uh, IPA. And uh, this is the big uh, fan favorite. Um, so uh, when I personally discovered my, my craft beer journey outside of Montreal when I came to Ontario, uh, I will say Nickel Brook is, is one of my favorite breweries in Ontario, so. Awesome, awesome, yeah. 
we've been around for a while, you know, we've been around since the uh, early 2000s. Uh, we're located in uh, Burlington. Uh, we just opened up a second brewery uh, just off the Queensway in Etobicoke. So if you're ever down in the neighborhood, uh, stop in. Yeah, I'm a big fan. I uh, did a little like kind of personal craft beer journey in October last year uh, when things were not crazy with uh, the pandemic. And I actually got to enjoy a beer in your tap room in Burlington for the first time ever. So I was very happy about that. And uh, personally, I'm a big fan of the Bastard series that comes out of Nickelbrook. Uh, sweet. Love them too. Uh, so for those people who want to, um, outside of, of today's uh, event, those who want to enjoy your beers at the brewery, where are you guys physically located in Burlington? So uh, we're at 864 Drury Lane. So uh, come on down, please. And for yourself, any uh, friends of the festival you've enjoyed today? I just tried some uh, Small Pony, so uh, fantastic little brewery. Uh, but uh, I'm still making my way around to the other uh, tents. Yeah, Sean at uh, Small Pony is a great guy. Uh, like you said, fantastic. The souring that he does is something else. So, um, All right, for those who are looking for you guys on social media and online, how can people find you? So it's just nickelbrook.com, and uh, you can find all of our products in the uh, TBS, uh, the LCBO grocery stores, and uh, some of the finer restaurants and uh, bars around Ottawa. And for those who are looking, free shipping on Tuesdays on their website if you spend over $50. Awesome. Thank you very much, Grant. You Have yourself much. a great festival. Yeah, you too. Thanks. All right, here we are with Alexis, one of the organizers of the tournament today. She was kind enough to uh, invite us out to be media at the festival today. Alexis, thank you very much for bringing us today. My pleasure. I understand this is uh, the fourth edition this year. It is. So we started back in 2017. Obviously, we had to take a brief hiatus due to the pandemic, but we're back and we're better than ever. How does it feel to be back after those two years? Oh, it feels so good. And I know for all of our vendors out here, they've had a really rough time. So the fact that they were able to come back and greet all their people means a whole bunch to all of us. And uh, we're personally in from Montreal. So just getting the Orleans name out there for people who are so close from Montreal to Orleans, just come on down and enjoy some beers. I understand this is the first and possibly another one in the fall. Uh, yeah, so we have our Cork and Fork Festival where we're all about wine and food. Uh, so come on down, check out www.orleansfestivals.ca for more information on that. We're also on socials, so all of our info is there. Um, and I'm from Montreal too, actually, so it's only about an hour and 45 minute drive without ta traffic. So for those of you who want to come in the fall or next summer, come on down to the Orleans Craft Beer Festival. It's a great time and you're going to some, enjoy some great beers. Heck yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, Alexis. I hope you have a great festival. Thank you so much for coming. All right, we're at Saunders Cider here, and joining me is Jeff. Carp, nice to see nice you. To meet Welcome you, Jeff. to the festival. Thank you very much. Uh, looking forward to this. I've never tried your ciders before. Can't wait. Uh, but let the people know about Saunders Cider. Who are you guys? Okay, well, so um, Saunders Farm, that everybody seems to know, is, uh, you know, we've got the, the Halloween, we've got the, the Christmas, the farm camps. Uh, a year ago, they bought Flying Canoe Hard Cider and moved it to the farm out in Munster. Nice. And so, uh, what we decided to do is have some fun with it. So the first uh, flavor, the original, okay. is called Flying Canoe, and we just rebranded it and repackaged it. It's a semi-sweet, it's right down the middle. Uh, did you want to try some while we're yeah, doing yeah, this? Yeah, okay, so hang on. Beautiful. Ah, I love Beautiful that. Sound. So uh, it's a, a nice blend of Macintosh and other apples, okay. and uh, it's 27 grams of sugar per liter, so it's a, uh, it's not super sweet. It's sort of in that, uh, I don't know, strong bowl range. It's, it's got a really great nose. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I mean, we are called all beer inside, but we are diversifying to ciders and uh, distilleries and eventually vineyards as well. So. well I've seen cider on tap at a yeah. bunch of pubs, eh? Exactly. And we're on tap all it's over the along. place, so. Awesome. As we do on yeah. the show, a toast. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, beautiful nose. Nice, clean, yeah, not overly puckering. Refreshing. Yeah pretty great so this was the original and as we had this we decided we wanted something dry so that traditional dry cider we call it sawtooth you know so it's got a nice bite to it and this only has six grams of sugar per liter and we'll give you another glass because I've got a bunch here and it's got again it's got that nice crisp finish and again yeah well you know and again it's a little hot today uh, at the festival, but this is going to be refreshing. Another, another cheers, because cheersing is good. Yeah. 
super nice clean. Yeah, and again, mm -hmm. that nice dry finish at the wow. end. Very tasty. Also, as we're basically an amusement park with all the family <laughs> fun, we were inspired by the confections at the farm, so we've got this beautiful candy apple nice. cider. So it's um, 64 grams of sugar per liter, which you're like, oh my God, that's a lot. But things like summer's beer, yeah. close to 100. Yeah. Right? So, and look at this gorgeous color here. That so just like a candy apple. That is beautiful. Oh. Love the nose. It's always that nose. Yeah, well, Ooh. again, you know, nose, big part of flavor, yeah. right? You know, so aroma is that and the appearance, delightful. Toast. Cheers. And now how fun is that, right? Yeah. This is just you know, a little bit of sweetness. All of our ciders here that we have at the festival are 5%. Okay. That's all we have, but we, it's going to be our first anniversary in July. So right after this show airs, we will have an anniversary one. Uh, nice. That'll be six and a half percent. And then uh, a super fun summer flavor as well that I can't talk about. So wow. th those are the flavors. Those are our three core flavors. I think we'll just wow. those are beautiful. stick to that. But we have a 200-year-old um, log barn. Okay. That is our tasting room, Saunders Cider House. We just got a, a super sexy pizza oven put in there. Oh, yeah. We've got zip lines over one of the hedge mazes. We have North America's largest collection of hedge mazes, 100 acres, 150,000 trees. Will be entertainment, cider. We even, we even have some beer on the farm for those guys who uh, aren't ready to do it yet. But well, um, means share the love, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, I I, I think of it as a, it's something to discover. I'm a beer sommelier, yeah. and I uh, have you know 40 years in, in the pub industry, and I knew a little bit about cider. But over the last year, I've learned so much, and uh, and I appreciate what it is and what it is to offer. So I hope people come on out and try some Saunders cider. Ask for it by name. Yeah, I mean, what's the most important part is like try everything if, if you, and a sport, supporting local is another big thing with us. And you're clearly a Canadian local company and that's what matters to us, for supporting a Canadian company. For sure, and craft is craft and that's why we're happy to be here and happy to be celebrating this. So Love thank it. you so much, Carp, for the time. Yeah. I appreciate it. Okay, and let people know where they can find you on location and on social media. Yeah, so Saunders Farm is uh, on Bleaks Road in Munster, Ontario, to the west end of Ottawa. Uh, we are in, Flying Canoe is in the LCBOs, a whole bunch of them in the Ottawa area. We're at Pumzid Restaurants all over the place but the best place to enjoy it is, is super fresh right there at the farm uh, but wherever you're enjoying it enjoy it with a friend and a smile and cheers to Absolutely. you cheers we'll see you again Toast. thank you okay uh joining me now is jay from hot bomb apparel hey how you doing good yourself uh good. thanks all first of all to let us speak about your apparel your glasses and everything yeah uh, so tell the people who you are so I'm Jay Kaloran, um, a uh, beer sommelier, uh, Prudhomme beer sommelier. I used to organize a lot of beer pairing dinners in Cornwall, and then of course the uh, the pandemic hit. Couldn't do my beer dinners anymore, and uh, after the first year of the pandemic, started to get pretty bored and started doodling ideas and started creating a website, and that's kind of how Hot Bomb came to be. So it was more of a a COVID um, you know little side project kind of thing to keep me busy, and so uh, it's kind of grown into what you're seeing here today. It's good to hear that you're still going and, and we're yep. seeing that in the people that are here right like people are just so happy to be out again and they're staying and they're talking and we're just you know those sorts of things right just to be able to have those interactions again with people so it's been nice it's clearly your first fest first time you're at the orleans craft beer fest uh what made you decide to come this year and not start at maybe another festival uh well i was at the cornwall uh beer fest a few weeks ago rock the river um, so I'm originally from Cornwall, so I'm based in Cornwall, and then with Orleans being as close as it is to, to Cornwall and, and reached out to them to see if they had an apparel tent, and they didn't, and they were quite happy to, to, to bring me on board and uh, to help out. I was also helping out with the, um, the homebrew judging as well for, uh, for the event, and so we did that a few weeks ago, and then again we did Best of Show here on Thursday night. And uh, so, yeah, it's been nice to be involved, not just with the apparel, but with the, uh, the event itself. You have quite a variety of apparel here. What made you kind of have a variety and not just stick with t-shirts or socks or hoodies. Yeah, so the idea is to create this online um, apparel store, right, for the craft beer geeks. Yeah. Uh, my wife has been trying to buy me craft beer related items for 20 years and, and the quality hasn't always been there, right? When you buy stuff online, you don't know. And so it was really, really important to, to me that I go with the high quality shirts um, and then try to look at different people within the um, 
you know, the, the craft beer world, right? So we got the brewer shirts, right? The kind of design for the, uh, the home brewers, you know? Everybody likes to have their brew day shirt when they home brew. And then we kind of move it along. We got a little bit of our Star Wars theme. And then, of course, the beer curious for those who are, um, again, curious about different styles of beer and, and trying different beers. Right down to the women's tank tops and the, uh, the Hooray for Beer shirts and just trying to make it fun, right? And lots of different colors. Love it. Uh, so for those who are looking for your apparel or yourself, uh, where can they find you online? Yeah, it's hotbombapparel.ca. Yeah, and on uh, the socials under the same Hot Bomb Apparel. Amazing. So I look forward to it, and uh, one day we'll have to get together and do a full-on interview and enjoy a beer. Yeah. Have a good one. Thanks, man. Okay, and right now we're with Michelle from Beer Grains, and he's going to tell us all about uh, your business. Yeah, Beer Grain is uh, a store that has all the different ingredients and equipment to, build, to brew your own beer. So... Uh, from hops to uh, grains, yep. and anyways, the whole thing that you need for your home brew. Okay, so home brewing systems as well, like grain fathers and all that stuff? Yeah, every all that equipment is at the store for cool. you to look at. Amazing. Uh, and what brought you to this year's festival? Well, we're here a couple of years ago, and uh, it's beer. And we love beer, and we, a lot of our customers come here, and they expect us to be here. And we have a, a contest right now that uh, you can brew. If you win the contest, you brew your own beer at our store. So our brewer will uh, get you to find out what kind of beer you you're, you're, you're like have to have. And then you can uh, brew it and you will be working, brewing it yourself with the help of our brewer. And at the end of two weeks, you get it bottled up at the store and you take it home. That's amazing, I love that idea. And it is, uh, it is a Canadian company clearly, which is supporting Canadian businesses, which is very important, so love it. Uh, so uh, any friends kind of uh, who support your business to try at this year's festival? Oh, yes. We have uh, a Broken broken Stick. Mm -hmm. That's a brewery from uh, Hammond yeah. that uh, we dearly like. We have the uh, Brewworks Hoffman in Rockland, which, again, is, is part of our uh, organization. They, they, they do shop at our, our store. Okay. When they forget something, well, <laughs> they know where to go. They, they, they can get it. Yeah. And uh, most of the brewers here, we, we we know on and off because they've they've came, they've they've come to that store to get some of the stuff. From. That's uh, that's amazing. I love it. Uh, so uh, for those who want to find your store and where they can find you on social media, where can they do that? Okay, you can go to beergrains.com. That's our website, and our address is at uh, 99 Kremezi in Gatineau. Okay. It's easy to get there. Uh, just use your phone. Follow it. And you'll, you'll get there. And then I'm guessing you're not far from Bar Canada or, one, or Cinquième Baron or one of those guys? Of course. <laughs> it's just, and all these people come to our store. Yeah. So that we've known them from the beginning. Love it. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Okay, joining me right now is Philippe from Duke 25 Hops. Uh, thank you very much for letting us speak to you about your uh, hop farm, clearly. Uh, let, us, let the people know all about you. All right, so we opened in 2013. We're near Quebec City, about 45 minutes. Uh, so we got 22,000 plants and there's a friend of mine in BC who owns another firm so we kind of share hops together. Uh, so t all together it's like 66 acres and 66,000 plants. That's, uh, that's a lot of work. That's a lot of plants. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what brought you to this year's festival? Uh, her. No, uh, <laughs> Kevin. Uh, I, I was looking for festivals uh, uh, across Canada and the States and uh, looking for festivals that have like you know, lots of brewers, not just people drinking beer. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, reach out to Kevin and then uh, find this place. And uh, it's actually been very, very good so far. Any uh, brewers uh, in the festival are cur currently using your hops? No, that's why I'm here. <laughs> but there's a lot of people in Montreal, Quebec, and uh, I, I'm i from Halifax. Okay. So I, I it's less, like Greg Nash is like very well known to... Uh, make like very good IPAs and he's uh, actually used our Chinook uh, and is releasing right now today in Halifax. Okay. Yeah. And who, uh, who are some of your, as we're from Montreal, who are some of your Montreal uh, brewers that you work with? Malstrom okay. took our Riel to, uh, he used our Riel for his lager uh, and there's uh, La Pocatière Brewery, that's another one, good friend of ours, uh, he's using our Magnum. Um, there's a few others I cannot gotta check on my list, but uh, yeah, there, well, there's over 100, 100 brewers basically. And if uh, anybody is here visiting uh, that you're hoping to be working with in the future, who would it be at the today's festival? 
Uh, stray dog. I like the stray dogs, but like, um, you know, they're making, everyone's making very great IPAs, so I'd like to uh, work with them all. <laughs> awesome. Uh, thanks for the talk. Let everybody know where they can find you. Uh, so, duke25hops.com is a great place. That's our site. And uh, we're, uh, the farm is 45 minutes away from Quebec City, and uh, that's going to be a tough one, but uh, saint Edouard de lot but uh, yeah, check it out online and you, you'll find it for sure. Is uh, saint Edouard kind of bef between Montreal and Quebec City or exactly. past? Okay. Between Montreal. Okay, and where can people find you on social media? Uh, same, it's, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, it's all slash uh, Duke25Hops, basically. Thank you very much, have a great day. My pleasure. All right, here we are with Stephanie of Dunrobin Distillery. Hi guys. <laughs> Thank you very much for uh, letting us speak with you about the distillery. Um, so what is your role at the distillery? So I am the farmer's market manager. I also do a little bit of event photography and uh, I do tastings around the city, uh, the city, things like that. Yeah. Speaking of uh, tasting, you, uh, your team made me a delicious looking drink here. What am I having? Absolutely. So you are having our silver pickle uh, Caesar. It is the newest addition to the family. Um, we're actually launching it at this event this weekend, um, and it hasn't even hit our website or anything yet, so this is the only place you can get it right now. Uh, we're going to be bringing it to the markets on our website, hopefully by next week. Uh, this will be available, I'm assuming, at LCBO's and other market locations? Hopefully by the end of the year in the LCBO, and uh, you'll, it'll be in the, all of the markets across the city and on our website, Dunrobin Distilleries, uh, by next week. Uh, we're, uh, we still haven't uh, figured out that price point yet. I think it's going to be forty nine ninety five, but there is a discussion about it. <laughs> As we say, a toast. Cheers. <laughs> oh. oh, delicious. It's good, eh? So we add, uh, we use dill in it. We add a little bit of cucumber. Uh, there's, you're going to taste um, some um, garlic, yeah. and uh, yeah, the peppery notes. We add a little pepper in there. It's just, it's perfect for a Caesar. It's actually great in a dirty martini as well. It's um, for a uh, dill pickle vodka, it's very deceiving. Yes, definitely. It's absolutely amazing. It really took me by surprise, that's for sure. Yeah, no, uh, you know, it, it's not only like overpowering, but it's super well balanced, fantastic. Uh, what about some of your other products now? Gin, gin is huge in Canada. Yes. Clearly, Don Robin, I'm assuming, started with gin and then went to limoncello and a whiskey. Yeah, exactly. Um, so let's talk about a bit of a, the Earl Grey Gin. Yeah, so it's actually one of our best sellers. Um, the Earl Grey Gin is infused with the butterfly pea flower and that's how we get that gorgeous bluey purple color. I love to call it a magic trick in a bottle because as soon as you add any citrus to it, it changes to a vibrant pink color as well. Um, the flavor profile is absolutely beautiful. You'll taste bergamot and that's why we call it Earl Grey, but you get more of a citrus note out of it. You'll taste juniper because we're more of a juniper forward and uh, you'll finish on a cardamom note when you have it on its own. Yeah. And uh, for those who are Star Trek people, obviously Earl Grey. Yes. Definitely Star Trek Next Generation style. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and then the whiskey. Now, I know whiskey in Canada has got a kind of complicated history. How were you able to release a whiskey pretty quickly? Because I've never honestly heard of Dunrobin until recently. Yes. So we've been in production for about five years now. Uh, we did start off the whiskey right off the bat. So it is a four and a half year old. Um, but we've only been selling our products since the January of 21. Yeah. And uh, with the pandemic and everything that happened, uh, clearly the company survived. Uh, <laughs> what kind of difficulties did you run into with the pandemic? Um, there was a few, uh, a few things that we had to work through. Um, we had to, uh, two and a half years, we had to wait for o to open up our distillery. We're actually opening up on Stittsville in Main Street. And uh, it's going to be absolutely beautiful. Uh, we're going to put a basement distillery so we can do tours. Then we're going to have four floors, including a top floor patio and um, just a regular patio outside. We'll have a bottle shop. We'll have a bar for tastings. I'm pretty sure we're going to team up with some local breweries as well. And then next year, we're going to team up with uh, local food vendors. And we'll have food outside as well. That's fantastic. I love hearing that. Now, when that location is open in Stittsville, what's the physical address going to be for those who are looking for you? Um, a, I believe it's 1498 Main Street. <laughs> in Stittsville. In Stittsville, that's correct. <laughs> and uh, for those of you who are looking online and social media, where can people find the Dunrobin brand? Absolutely. So online, our website's dunrobindistilleries.com. Uh, you can find all of our information, drink recipes, and you can also order online from there. You can find us on Instagram, uh, Dunrobin Distill. 
And you can also find us on Facebook, Don Robin Distilleries. Perfect. Thank you very much. Have Thank yourself you. a great festival. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, here we are with Jeremy from Sandbagger Heart Seltzer. How are you? Good. Thanks. Uh, thank you very much for uh, letting us talk about your uh, your beverages today. Uh, what brings you to the Orleans Craft Beer Festival? Well, we uh, we started this company uh, just at the beginning of COVID, March of 2020, uh, with the idea of really just selling to bars, restaurants, golf courses, that kind of stuff. We all know what happened at the beginning of March of 2020. Um, so we had to change our business plan pretty uh, dramatically and pretty quickly. So. Um, you know, as things have gone on, we really promoted ourselves uh, directly through uh, Instagram, Facebook, um, Twitter, that kind of stuff, and it, it, it's taken off. So uh, we're just looking for new consumers, and because we are small and independent, uh, we just thought it'd be a great idea to, uh, to uh, you know, appeal to a craft craft beer consumer. So that, that's my background too. I've always worked for craft breweries. So we use a, a craft made gin out of Niagara Falls, and it just works well within this environment. Sounds like you spent quite a bit of time in the craft industry. I did, yeah, yeah. I was with um, one of Ontario's first craft breweries, uh, Upper Canada, back in the early 90s. I worked, I worked for Creamore, I worked for Steam Whistle, so uh, I've been at this for about two and a half years now. Uh, sounds busy. Uh, so you brought me out a delicious looking beverage here to try. What am I drinking? Uh, this is the uh, Sandbagger Boysenberry Hard Seltzer. So it's a mix of uh, blackberry, raspberry, and loganberry. This is our newest product. Uh, we just had it in the LCBO for the last uh, three weeks, really. Fantastic, as we do on the show. A toast! Salute. Oh, beautiful nose. Yeah. Nice. Now, uh, seltzers are becoming more and more popular. Clearly at a beer festival, it's kind of a different what brought you to a beer festival instead of trying like another sort of alcohol-based festival. Well, you know, I've worked many beer festivals over my career in craft beer, and uh, although I am still a beer lover, and I recognize people are here for the beer, sometimes people just want a little palate refresher, and a seltzer is a perfect way to do that. So, um, see, you know, we've been pretty busy today, and it's just nice to have people coming over and enjoying a seltzer. What's the ABV on this? Because uh, to me, it tastes like uh, fizzy water. <laughs> uh, it's five percent. That's deceiving because you could crush a bunch of these and be in trouble after. So that was the hope. You know, we we really uh, planned it uh, to be something that's really well balanced, um, you know, sessionable and um, not overwhelmingly sweet. We use about uh, 10, 10 grams of cane sugar, natural flavors. Um, we wanted it to, you know, drink like a beer. So if you're a beer drinker, you can appreciate this for the subtleties of the flavor um, and drink lots of it. So that's. Now that things are feel like they're coming back around, do you see ourselves doing more festivals in the future? Yeah, I mean, as a, as a small company, um, you know, we don't really have much of a budget for marketing. We don't, we can't afford billboards and TV and radio and print. So, um, you know, we we truly believe that the quality of the product speaks for itself. So, if we can get people drinking it, they love it, then they're going to ask for it when they go to the liquor store or bar, or restaurant, or golf course. So. Speaking of those, you're available at LCBOs in another location? Yeah, so the Boysenberry is just new to the LCBO. Um, uh, very recently, as of May, uh, the original Lemon Lime is, uh, has been in the LCBO for about a year now. So we're just in the process of applying for some new products for next year, and hopefully uh, we'll get the... Uh, the other one is the Pink Grapefruit, and so we're working on that one as well. Now, with the popularity of the hard seltzer coming higher and higher, higher, how do you feel you are in that market right now? Yeah, I mean, we're so new to it, um, but uh, it's really exciting times for us because when we launched, we, we literally launched at exactly the same time as White Claw, which is, as we know, the industry leader. So, you know, it's like, okay, well, we didn't want to go head to head with them. They're vodka based, um, zero sugar. We just wanted to do a little bit different. And uh, so far, the response has been incredible. As a, as a new product to the LCBO, we're ranking in the top, uh, well, really the top 20 for new innovations in a very, very competitive marketplace. So we're pretty excited. Do you see yourselves having some sort of tap room or where people could find you in the future? Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, we would love that. Um, because we are spirit based, we're kind of limited to uh, how we produce and where we produce. Um, so currently we're working with a couple of co-packers to make it. and. Um, you know, eventually as we grow and as the rules change and things open up, then we would love to have our own facility. But right now, um, we're really happy with the, the co-packers we're working with. And so obviously the, the LCBO is a great partnership, uh, gets us lots of distribution throughout Ontario. Uh, plus for the products that we 
aren't, that aren't available to the LCBO, we can directly deliver to home as well. So um, that's the plan for now. And for those who are looking for you online and social media, where can people find you? Uh, sandbagger.ca. Social media at? Uh, sandbagger Heart Seltzer, uh, Instagram and Facebook. So uh, for those who are looking for a hard seltzer in Canada, check these guys out. Super delicious, super crushable. Definitely one of the best seltzers I've ever had. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. Right. Have a good day. Enjoy the day. Here we are with Tim from Evergreen Craft. Evergreen Craft, we got to interview Chris back in episode 129. Tim, thanks for talking to us today about the Orleans Craft Beer Festival. What's bringing Evergreen Craft here today? Yeah, well, we got a lot of taps going today. Uh, we got a couple special releases as well. And the freshest I'm drinking right here is our, our Belgian wit. Orange two ways and coriander. It was quite a bit to clean up after I brewed it, but the results, you know, it's tasting good. Did you guys get nailed a couple of weeks ago in the big uh, storm of Ontario? Yeah, yeah, we lucked out. Uh, you know, our fermentations were done, so temperature control wasn't a big issue for us. We didn't lose any beer, uh, and it, it came back on pretty quick, which is different than where I live. It was off for about a week, you know. Well, yeah, uh, our friend Sean over at Small Pony, he got bad nailed bad, oh, so yeah, yeah. Big we're gonna, too, right? yeah, we're gonna talk to them soon. Uh, all right, so as we do for the show, uh, to host. Super crushable, super light. Uh, so is this Evergreen Craft's first Orleans Craft Beer Festival? I know there's a two-year two break, but is this the first one as Evergreen Craft here? You know, I, I think so, right? Like, the brewery started up in 2019 there, and uh, I think this is the first, like, foray into this, right? And so far, the reception's been really good, a lot of good feedback from everybody, and it, it's good to be out here and see people drinking the craft, right? How wild is that that Chris came from his garage to where they are now? It's great to hear, you know, and like if you're ever in the brewery, you'll see in the bathrooms there, we got some pictures of him from where he was living. And to see that scale up to where we are now, I mean, it's, it's, it's a great story. I'm a big fan. I love the fact that I could go do my Costco shopping, enjoy yeah, some yeah. beer, go to Oham, enjoy some distillery. I'm not personally a cannabis uh, consumer, but any friend who is, I highly suggest that cannabis is legal in Canada. Why not try it? All so. right there, man. It's all right there. Bakery too, right? So. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a perfect little like, oh, everything is settled here. Yeah. Uh, distillery, craft beverage, consumer, just everything you need as a adult. One stop shop, man. Yeah, <laughs> it's fantastic, and and a Costco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, no, I'm a big fan of Evergreen Craft. I have been since the garage days when it was just Chris, and like you guys and and Conspiracy Theory, starting in a garage to where you guys are now, it must be mind blowing for you guys sometimes. Yeah, it, like I said, it's a great story. I mean, you want to see that? It's better to see something like that, really organic, lifts it up, as opposed to you know someone coming in with a lot of money. It's a different feel, different vibe. Uh, so there's a lot of creativity, a lot of like getting it done. You know, I, I like the story. I don't lie. If I ever had like millions and millions of dollars, I'd be that like immediate startup <laughs> yeah. personally. Yeah, uh, yeah, but yeah, it'd yeah. be in Montreal, so that's different for me. Uh, awesome. Uh, so for those who haven't seen the original episode, uh, one twenty nine, uh, where can people find Evergreen Craft Ales physically? Well, the brewery's the best spot to get the freshest stuff and the newest stuff. Uh, we got a couple of beers in the LCBO as well, and there's ordering online. But I'd highly recommend coming in, trying it out. Like I said, the Belgian Wit, for example, not in the LCBO. But we package it fresh and it's ready to go in the brewery, you know? And what's the address of the physical location? Man, uh, we're on Silver 7, uh, across from Costco. The actual address, do you know? Oh boy. You know what, we'll add it in the show notes. Uh, but on social media and the website, what's all that stuff? Yeah, so evergreencraftales.ca. Perfect, so that's all on the website. Check these guys out. In in Canada, these guys, Small Pony, Calabougie, everybody in Canada. All right, thank you, Tim. Yeah. Have thank a great you, festival. Enjoy the beer. All right, so right now we're talking with Josh out of Dominion City. Josh, thank you for hosting us. Honestly, Dominion City kicks butt. So glad we finally get to speak to you with you. Looking forward to a full interview in the future, but right now, what brought you to the uh, Orleans Craft Beer Fest? Yeah, we love this festival. Um, it's nice to meet you. Thanks for the interest. But yeah, we, I mean, this is the first thing we've done out in the world in a couple of years, to be honest with you. And it feels really nice because this is our community. And so to be here and uh, just feel very normal and, and share beer with folks who we know and, 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 and just really everybody has been really nice. Yeah, it's been a rough 27 months. Yeah, yeah, no, I think everyone's feeling it. So, you know, to have a nice night out uh, together is, is really cool. Now, uh, you brought me out a fantastic looking beverage for me here to try today. What am I drinking? Yeah, this is a Sunsplit IPA. So it's uh, it's a hoppy beer we make that, you know, uh, we've been really proud of and um, we're just starting to share it a little more widely. Uh, we've, we've never shared any beer through the LCBO. 
and uh, it's just been listed, and it's uh, something we're excited about. So, yeah. Fantastic. As we do on the show, a toast. Oh, delicious, super crushable. Um, what are you saying? Uh, five, five percent? Yeah, six, six percent. Yeah. That's uh, personally for me, where it gets dangerous is those like six, seven, eight percent beers that are like it's delicious and juicy. Uh oh, I'm in trouble. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. Um, this was actually we on our first anniversary. We're eight now. On our first anniversary, we took the team to Vermont. And uh, we shared a beer with Matt at uh, Fiddlehead. It was mastermind, and it blew our minds. So it was like nothing we'd ever had before. And it was a full 18 months after that that we were kind of working on a beer like this. And so um, something, something we're pumped about. I mean, you guys at Dominion City are huge on the Canadian beer scene. You uh, brewed a beer with one of my favorite breweries back in Montreal, Cato Lejeune, Four Origins. Um, I mean, how does it feel to have that name out there across Canada where you guys are the place to go. I mean, that's very flattering, and it's nice of you to say that. Um, making a beer with Keegan was very cool for our team, and uh, it was really awesome to share beer in Montreal. We're buds with the guys at uh, L'Espace Public as well. I went to middle school with uh, Simon over there, and we've made a beer there as well. But to share our beer in Quebec when it's right across the river is always a treat. Um, and yeah, honestly, man, we just want to make great beer in Ottawa and be here for our community. And it's awesome when folks from outside our city take notice and want to hang out and, and team up it's a lot of fun for us i mean i've personally been to the uh bottle room where you guys are sharing beers across canada uh across ontario like the way you guys support local is like yeah by us friendly competition by our friends that that is big yeah it's been really neat to be able to do that our friends at the dominion bottle shop it means we can bring stuff in from folks we admire uh we really do focus on ontario we bring in wine cider and beer and uh it's awesome and it's great for our fans too they're coming to buy our beer and we can be a way into other things that we think they might like and have be able to suggest stuff that w that our friends are making has been really cool really really rewarding do you guys have a, a draw from quebec because obviously we're right there how do you feel as the quebec people coming over to drink beer at dominion it's been a cool thing i mean someone told me years ago that here in ottawa there's a unique thing where Obviously, we're influenced by a large English-speaking Canadian city in Toronto. We're proximity to Montreal, which has obviously always just had this other vibe and other very interesting beer tradition. And then Vermont is really a stone's throw. And so you've kind of had this trifecta kind of weighing on the beer scene in Ottawa, which has been really, really neat. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I think that's interesting. Um, and I do think there's a cool confluence here. I've, I've said it time and time again, those in Montreal, Ottawa, Toronto, we are very spoiled for good beer. Yeah. Well, and it's been really cool to see how the Quebec scene's come along. I mean, watching what the guys at saint yam are doing, watching what the guys at uh, Brasse du bac canada do. I mean, we've got amazing beer just on the other side of the river, people who are doing awesome stuff. But those who are visiting, where can people, one, physically find you, and two, find you online? Yeah, you can find us online at dominioncity.ca, and then our brewery's open seven days a week, and we're just in the east end of Ottawa. Love to come by in the summer and join us in the beer garden. And what's the actual address of the brewery? It's uh, 5510 Canatech Road. Fantastic, guys. I love Dominion City. Big fan. Have been for a while. My craft beer journey brought me to Dominion City. I'm glad you guys are here at the festival today. And I will be back, and we will do a full interview at some point. So thank you very much. You have yourself a great festival. All right, here we are at Kevin from Vimy Brewing. Uh, thanks for uh, having us uh, behind the counter today. Yeah, Looking forward to talking about, a uh, quick little talk about why you're at the festival and some beers we're uh, about to drink. Yeah. So, uh, sure. first of all, Kevin, uh, what brings you to Orleans Craft Beer Festival this year? To be honest, this is like, this is my favorite uh, craft beer festival of, uh, in, in Ottawa. Like, this is one of the best festivals, in my opinion. Uh, we do it every year, or we try to. Uh, we obviously couldn't do it in the last couple of years, but um, this is definitely one of my favorite festivals to go to. Well, very well run, lots of good breweries, lots of good food, lots of good music. It's a good time. I believe this is the fourth or fifth year this festival is happening, from my understanding? From what I understand, yes, and uh, we've been here since the beginning. Uh, you bought me out a fantastic looking beer here to try. What am I drinking? So you're drinking uh, Vimy Pale Ale. It's a it's a classic American pale ale. As you can see, it's not hazy. Yeah. Now that's the first thing you can notice of, of that beer. Um, it's a but it's it is hoppy. It's dry hopped. 
it's it's got classic American style pale ale, pale ale hops in it. It's it's a little bitter. It's got some malt backbone, not overly hoppy, more balanced, and uh, yeah, you get some uh, notes, a little bit of citrus, a little bit of grapefruit in there. Uh, it's a well balanced American uh, pale ale. I look forward to it. Uh, so as we do on the show, uh, I believe you have here a toast. Yeah, this is something like, this is my palate. I know it's not for everybody, clearly. Yep. This is my palate. Something I sit down, I have a bunch of. It's not like overly malty, it's not overly hoppy, it's yep. incredibly balanced. And uh, I've had a bunch of Emmy's beers before. Uh, you guys just, classic style, you guys nail it out of the park. Yeah, and it, you know, one thing um, to note is that this is the, a beer that we just introduced into the beer store. So you can get this beer at uh, about 115 beer stores right now, all across Ontario. Um, and it's something that appeals to craft beer drinkers who want a, something a little hoppy, but nothing crazy. It's a 5% beer, uh, but it's hoppy enough, flavorful enough that it appeals to like a craft beer palate. It's, uh, as I like to say, that's a good gateway beer. Yeah, for sure. Um, a gateway beer into the hoppier beers that that are out there for sure. For those who are out of town, where can people physically find Vimy if it's not a festival? So we're in about 115 uh, beer stores with uh, three of our SKUs. So we have our cream ale, red ale, pale ale in about 115 beer stores all across uh, Ontario. It's the beer stores that you can actually physically go in and see the beer, not the ones that just are just the kiosk. Uh, we're also getting back into LCBOs with our cream ale, and um, we're going to be in more grocery stores throughout Ontario. So, and you can also order our beer online, uh, vimybeer.ca. You can order our beer anywhere in Ontario for shipping. We do a ten ten dollar flat rate shipping. Uh, we also do some special promotions where we do uh, free shipping in Ontario. Plus, uh, today's episode comes out on Canada Day, and clearly you're very uh, military-focused about the troops. But we will have free shipping for Canada Day because um, we our brewery is all about uh, celebrating Canada and Canadian achievements. That's why we we created the brewery, uh, and we uh, celebrated or we. Um, named it Vimy Brewing Company based off the Battle of Vimy Ridge, which we thought was one of the first great Canadian achievements. And uh, we named the, the brewery after the battle. No, fantastic. Uh, so what is your exact address in Industrial Way? So uh, Industrial Avenue. Sorry. So we're on, so it's 830 Industrial Avenue, Unit 11, uh, right by the Napa building. And on social media, for those who are looking for you, Instagram, Facebook, where can people find you? Yeah, so at Vimy Brewing on uh, Instagram, Twitter, um, and Facebook. Fantastic. Really appreciate this. I look forward to doing a full interview in the future. Kevin, you have yourself a great time. You too. Happy Canada Day. Cheers. All right, now we're talking with Tyler from Floor Hall Brewing. Hey! Uh, thank you, Tyler, for talking about your beers and everything else. Uh, first of all, uh, Floor Hall's... How long has Floor Hall been around? Uh, it'll be our five-year anniversary come October. Personal beer journey. I get to visit you guys uh, when you had that street shut off for like the outside. Yeah, sun, uh, you know, sun was burning, but construction <laughs> and all that other stuff. Um, how much did that help having that big outdoor patio? It was great. I mean, when you couldn't have people inside, it was kind of the only the only game in town. But um, it was nice because it was a. Uh, a welcome change from sort of the, the more pub atmosphere that we that we operate under uh, normal conditions. But yeah, it was nice to see people come out and just support no matter what, you know. Rain, shine, sun, whatever. Uh, you brought me a tasty beverage here to try. What am I uh, drinking here? So that's our um, dry hop saison that uh, kind of got packaged back in March. Uh, so we released that. It was kind of a, a mistake, so to speak. Uh, it's supposed to be a Brett saison. Uh, with Brett that didn't really want to show its character enough. Uh, so we gave it a nice dry hop of Cascade and Saws and called it a day. Um, turned out really nice, won a gold at the Canadian Brewing Awards this year, which was a welcome surprise. And um, just kind of been rocking it at the festival really nicely. It's been going over really well. All right, as we do on the show, a toast. Cheers. Oh, 
incredibly well balanced, peppery, like not like the crazy, like ah, peppery, like the, the bread's still in there as well. It gives it like a nice little pineapple backbone sort of thing. It's cool. I mean, incredibly balanced. This is yeah. something like I could have a bunch of during yeah. summer, no problem. Fantastic beer. Uh, speaking of fantastic beers, fortunately, I've had a chance to visit the brewery. Uh, those who are looking to go to the brewery now, your brewery and tap room. Uh, in downtown ish Ottawa? Downtown, center town, so yeah. just north of the highway. Uh, beautiful, up and coming, um, super busy. Yeah. How do you draw people to the brewery? Um, I mean, it's the neighborhood a lot of the time, like a lot of people just in center town uh, coming out there, but I mean, people coming from around town as well. Um, we have a full food menu, that's always a big draw for a lot of people who don't want to have a couple beers and not have anything to eat. Um, it's a welcoming environment for everyone um, in, a, in a very old uh, garage uh, that was refurbished, so it's a heritage building now. Uh, it's just a beautiful space with great food, great beer, great people. And so uh, obviously clearly pandemic the last two years. Uh, how did you guys, obviously initial pandemic, uh, how much online and local support did you guys have? Uh, a ton. So we never had an online store. We never dealt with anything in that vein. So all of a sudden having to try to deliver all over town was a bit of a challenge. Uh, myself and a colleague kind of manned that operation. Uh, it was fantastic. We were getting support from all over town, from Orleans, Canada, Barhaven, everywhere, uh, and a ton from the neighborhood. So it was really welcoming, but it was it was definitely a, a learning experience for everyone. And then uh, the return to the festival. Yeah. How does that feel emotionally, obviously financially, physically? Yeah. How does kind of like that all combine? It's fantastic. It's nice to see people's faces, um, especially when you haven't seen them in forever. Uh, it's nice for people to just like kind of cut loose and, and get all of that out as well as see breweries that they haven't actually been able to go to for a while. Um, it's, re it's just really nice. Yeah. All right. So those uh, viewers of the show who's never been to Ottawa, where can people physically find your brewery? Uh, we're at 37 Flora Street in Centertown, so just north of the highway. Uh, yeah. Fantastic little spot just off of Bank Street in the heart of downtown. And uh, social media. Social media at Flora Hall Beer. Awesome. Thank you very much. I look forward to a full interview in the future at your brewery. Of course. Take care of yourself. You too. And uh, have a great festival. Thanks, All right. So uh, as you can see, the sun is going down. And uh, we're going to talk to Sean, episode 132 of the YouTube show. Sean, how's it going, man? It's going pretty good. It's been a bit of a long haul here. <laughs> I mean... Uh, as those who are on social media, it's been a wild couple of weeks, right? Oh yeah, yep. It's uh, this is a very we got asked to come to this festival like a couple days before it started, so uh, I'm the only person available to be here really. So it's been a good solid three days of standing up and having a couple volunteers to help me out. <laughs> also serving uh, deliciousness, which we're about to try. Uh, what am I drinking right now? Uh, this guy here that we got is uh, Hammock Weather. So Hammock Weather is a, um, it's lighter, it's like 4%, but it's probably one of the fruitiest beers that we have. It's uh, a blend of our Hascap beer and our raspberry beer, Jam Hands, and then we finish it with rose hips and hibiscus tea. So it's like, it's kind of like fruit punchy and just like all the berries. All right, as we've done live, a toast! <laughs> Oh, oh, <laughs> delicious. Just smells good. Also, mixes extremely well with Diet Pepsi, oh. surprisingly. Brings out the lime in the Pepsi. <laughs> Super crushable. Like, those who aren't in the know for sours, like, if you're in Ottawa, you want to try a sour beer, like, Small Pony is the place to go. I guess so, yeah. I would say so. <laughs> uh, is this Small Pony's first Orleans Craft Beer Festival? It is indeed. I've never been to this. I've, I've attended it before to like visit the breweries and have a couple beers, but I've not uh, not come as a vendor before. So this is nice. This is my first festival in almost three years to get out to. Yeah. How does it feel after 27 months of lockdown? How does it feel to be at a festival again? It's really nice to see people. It is, uh, I was 
I think everybody here, well, on top of being really rusty and trying to figure out how their equipment works again, uh, I think everybody is like really happy to see like the level of turnout. I think we were all a bit uh, apprehensive as to how busy it would be, but it's like sold out today. Yesterday was a great crowd. Even Thursday, the last two days in the rain were even fantastic. So yeah, it's been great. Um, I know you just, uh, as of this episode, about three weeks ago, full power down for three weeks. Like you had to can a beer without power. Like, but just how does it feel to be out and out of bed again? Pretty good. Like, uh, it's just nice to see people. Like, I, it's that's one of my favorite parts about the job. Uh, the brewery job is just actually getting to spend. 10 or 30 or 60 seconds having a conversation with someone about the beer and like that's that's just been something we haven't had for so long now so this is this is excellent it's excellent again yeah now, uh, I've already asked you before but uh, friends of the festival so if somebody comes here who's not used to sour tries like a great sour beer but you're like oh you might like a lager or you might like an IPA like friends of the festival you suggest um, I would say I've had a few people ask me if I got like a Corona and I was like, I, I was really thinking about saying, sure, here you go, here's the Corona. Um, <laughs> I f maybe next year I'll bring a six pack just in case. Uh, but I've been or like sending, PBR. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anybody who's been saying like, who's got a good, do you have a good IPA? I've been just like, uh, go check out Ridge Rock. Jamie's got a killer double dry hop mosaic IPA on now. It's like one of, and it's fresh too. He can't, he, he like packaged that this week. So it's top notch, yeah. So where can people find you? Uh, you can find us online at smallponybarrelworks.com. You'll find a few of our beers in the LCBO from time to time. Uh, and check us out on Instagram and Facebook and uh, the Twitters. <laughs> and those who want to uh, physically show up at the oh, brewery. Oh, yes. We have one of those, too. <laughs> we have a physical brewery in Canada at uh, 101 Schneider Road. And it's uh, if you come out to visit, visit us, you can make your own little brewery tour because we got Big Rig and Calabogie as neighbors. So it's a good time. Now, I got to say, you guys in Canada, kicking butt. I want to say more words, but, you know, PG. Um, uh, honestly, Sean, thanks once again. Uh, really appreciate everything. You guys stepping up, well, you stepping in finally. Um, thank you very much once again. And uh, as a show, as friends who constantly suggest it, we will be back to Small Pony. So. Awesome, man. It's awesome. Really good to see you. Thanks again, Sean. Hope you have a great night. All right. So uh, here we are with Steve, uh, beer ambassador from Skeleton Park Brewing. Yeah. Hey, thanks for having me. Hey, uh, so you guys are coming up from Kingston to Orleans. What made you guys decide to come here today? Hey, man. it's uh, We love making the trip. It's only a couple hours. Um, you know, it's, it's worth it. The people are great. There's lots of beers flowing, uh, lots of great companies here, uh, including yourself coming out, so we appreciate that. Uh, thanks for the time, for sure. Appreciate you uh, speaking with us, and speaking of uh, fantastic beers here today, you brought some great looking beers here to try. What are we uh, drinking right now? Yeah, so this is our uh, our summer seasonal uh, called Saison de Soleil. It's our uh, French farmhouse ale. Uh, it's very, very beautiful, 5.2%, uh, easily crushable summer beer. Um, yeah, it's got like a little bit of funkiness to it. It's nice and floral, but not overly perfumey like traditional ones. Uh, you know, very well balanced. We use a uh, Britannomyces um, uh, yeast as well, different yeast strains uh, to give it that uh, that special flavor. It's very good. It's, um, on the nose, it's light, it's peppery. Sure, it's super crushable. Yeah. Like uh, I know many people who are watching the show haven't had it before, but I crushed a couple of these last time I was at your brewery. So I'm looking forward to these as we say on the show. A toast. A toast. Oh yeah, light peppery, a little floral, and dangerous as I like call it because what five five point four percent roughly? Five two, five, five two. two. Yeah, I had to ask the brewmaster it's, that uh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, it is right on point with that five point yeah. two. Yeah, uh, super crushable. I mean, um, I like to say summer beers, but all the time beers at the same yeah. time. So it's great, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks. Is this uh, Skeleton Park's first Os uh, Orleans Craft Beer Festival? Well, we were here in 2019, uh, unfortunately, before the lockdown. Uh, you know, it's, like I said, it's good to be back. It's great to see the people. Um, lots of energy. Music is alive. You know, we feel alive. It's just, let's just, you know, crush beers, man. It's awesome. Perfect time for it. Now, those who are, uh, those Montrealers or Quebecers who are driving through on their way to Toronto or stopping in Kingston, 
uh, what, where can people physically find you and on top of that, social media? Cool. So uh, off of Gardner's Road, uh, it's like the second or third exit. I think there's four exits in Kingston. Uh, we're about three or four kilometers down the road, uh, right at the intersection of uh, Gardner's and Taylor Kid, just south of Taylor Kid. That's where you can find us. Um, skeletonpark.ca. That's where you can reach us. And all platforms, uh, Instagram, Facebook, uh, check us out. We got we got some great informative YouTube videos. Uh, yeah, Tre Trevor and Becky, the owners uh, and brewmaster, they're uh, amazing people. Uh, you know, spreading the love of beer. That's what we do. Traditional European ales. I mean, for those visiting Kingston from Montreal, Toronto, it's lousy for beer. There's so much beer, good beer to try. Scales Bark, 100%. You've got to go there when you're on your way to either Montreal or from Montreal to Toronto. You guys got to check them out from either way, along the 401, definitely Skeleton Bark, 100% fantastic brewery. And thank you very much for talking to us today. Cheers, man. Uh, so here we are at the end of the night, honestly, Orleans Craft Beer Fest. Definitely check it out. As we say at the end of all these episodes, drink craft, not crap. Don't drink a drive. If you're here for uh, some fun, make sure you have a designated driver. And uh, check us out, allbeerinside.com is the website, at allbeerinside on all social media. And as I've said it already before, drink craft, not crap.